Did you know that there are actually two different 3D systems in DaVinci Resolve? Here you are seeing the exact same object, once built with a classic 3D system and once built with USD 3D. But what are the real differences? Which one should you choose and how do you even get started with them? That's exactly what I'm going to explain in this video. Alright, so this here is a typical node tree of the classic 3D system. It's the older system and when it comes to texturing and shading, it definitely feels a bit outdated. That said, it is still the main system supported by DaVinci Resolve. The reason is simple, it gives you a lot more nodes to work with and most of the important ones are right here in the toolbar. So you can just drag them straight into your fusion composition. The biggest advantage, in my opinion, is that it includes a text 3D node, which is kind of crazy because the USD system still doesn't have one. And on top of that, you get a full 3D particle system, which you can find here as well. If you search for 3D using Ctrl plus space, you'll see all the nodes that are available in the system. Now let's take a closer look at this node tree and how you actually create and animate a 3D object like this Game Boy. The main node you need is the FBX Mesh 3D. In the inspector you can click browse and select a .fbx file which will load your 3D model. There are quite a few websites where you can download free 3D models. I've linked many of them on my discord under software. But the main platform I personally use is Sketchfab. You can search for a model there, click on download 3D model and make sure you choose the FBX format. That part is important. Later. When we talk about USD, you will need a USD file, but for the classic system, it has to be .fbx. After downloading, unzip the file, then go back to your FBX mesh node and browse for the FBX file. At first, you will usually see a white model that's way too large, so the next step is to resize it using a transform 3D node. Inside the downloaded folder, you'll also find a bunch of texture files. Out of all of them, there are three that really matter to us. The first one is the base texture. This one is easy to identify because it's usually the only image that actually looks like the final colors of the model. In this case, it's this one. Just drag it into Fusion. To apply textures to a 3D object, we need a material node like Blin, Cooktorrents, Fong or Ward. The main difference between them is how they react to light. To keep things simple, I'd recommend using Blin or Cooktorrents most of the time. And if your object is metallic, then Ward is usually the better choice. Now we connect the color texture to the diffuse color input of the material. If you hover over the inputs, you'll see their names on the bottom left corner. So in this case, it's the yellow input. The next texture we need is the bump map, which adds fake surface detail to the model. This one is also easy to spot because it's the strange purple looking image. Drag it into Fusion as well but before connecting it to the material, insert a bump map node and switch it from height map to bump map. You can immediately see how much extra detail this adds. The last texture is a bit more complicated because it controls specular intensity, which defines how strongly light is reflected on different part of the model. Since this is an older system, you will almost never get a proper specular map. What you usually get instead is a roughness map. This is the grey looking image. It's similar to specular map, but the values are inverted and it relies on alpha information. So what we do here is invert it using an inverted color node and then use the luma keyer to make the darker areas more transparent than the brighter ones. This isn't technically perfect, but the classic system just isn't up to modern standards anymore. So you have to make a few compromises. Still the result already looks pretty solid. For lighting, we add a Merge 3D node and then connect different light sources to it. Personally, I like starting with an ambient light to give the scene some overall brightness and then adding a directional light from the side with these rotation values to create nice shadows on the object. Make sure that lighting and shadows are enabled in the Render 3D node and switch the render type to Hardware Renderer for better performance. When it comes to animation, you can either animate the object using a camera 3D or you can simply keyframe transform 3D nodes. One really important thing to understand when animating rotations is the pivot point. The pivot point is basically the anchor around which your object rotates. If rotation ever feels wrong, 
it's almost always because of the pivot. For example, if you add another Transform 3D and click the small dot on the left, you can see the pivot point in the viewer. Rotating the object now makes it spin around its own axis, but once you move this pivot, it will rotate around that new point in a circular motion. Like I mentioned earlier, the biggest benefit of the classic system are the text 3D and particle 3D nodes. You can simply drag a text 3D node into your Fusion Comp, connect it to the Merge 3D, type in your text and add some extrusion. To give the text a shiny look, you can check out my shader tutorial. For particles, just grab a P emitter and P render. Connect the P emitter to the P render and the P render to the Merge 3D. The particle system alone could easily fill an entire video. But as a quick example, you can switch the style to Ngon, adjust the particle size and increase the region size. To get a constant particle count, keyframe frame 0 with a value, then go to frame 1 and keyframe it to 0. Between the P emitter and P render, you can also add a P-Turbulence node to give the particles some natural movement. If they suddenly disappear, just increase their lifespan. Let me know in the comments if you want a full particle tutorial, because there's a lot you can do here. Now let's move to the USD system. This is what a typical USD node tree looks like, and you'll probably notice that it's very similar, but also a bit cleaner and simpler. The big advantage of USD is that you only need the uloader node. Once you load a USD file, all the textures are already included automatically. USD is also the modern standard and is widely used in Blender and other 3D software. So it's much more common for models to be available in USD format. It's more physically accurate and generally looks a bit better than the classic system. The main downside right now is the lack of text 3D and particle support. Also, if you just want a simple 3D camera animation without lighting or textures, the classic system is more than enough. Lighting in USD is a bit different because there's no real ambient light equivalent. Instead, you usually light your scene using a distant light, which is basically the same as a directional light. In the U renderer, make sure scene and shadows are enabled. Another option is using a dome light, but you can save yourself a lot of time by using Escape's free macro. He made a full tutorial on how to use it, which is linked in the description, so definitely check that out. I also made a complementary macro for the classic system called Hope's 3D Generator, and I want to quickly show you how it works. Just drag the settings file into your Fusion composition. It will immediately ask you to select an FBX file, but for now just click Cancel. Connect it to Media Out and it won't work yet because no model is selected. If you click the Sketchfab button, it will open the Sketchfab website directly, where you can search for models. Download the FBX file again, unzip it and then browse for it inside the macro. The first thing I usually do is resize the model using the transform controls and position it correctly. We need the same three textures as before, but this time you can simply plug them directly into the macro. If you hover over the inputs, you will see exactly which texture goes where. There's also a fourth input called Reflection Map. This is used to add reflections and make the object look shiny, like metal or mirror. Normally, you would need a proper HDR reflection map, which is basically a projected 3D environment, and those are usually pretty expensive. I created my own using AI. They are not really true 3D projections, but they still look really cool and you will get them for free in my shiny and glassy shader pack. For example, if we use this silver reflection map, you can immediately see how it gives the model a metallic look. By default, the reflection strength is set to 1, which is basically mirror-like. On the lighting page, under reflection, you can adjust the constant strength to make it more or less reflective. If you don't need reflections, you can just ignore this input. Another really nice feature is Camera Shake. Under the Shake section, you can enable it to add subtle, natural camera movement to your 3D object. You can keep it very subtle or push it further for a stronger effect. I recommend enabling this before rendering because it can get a bit laggy. The lighting setup here is straightforward with an ambient light and two direction lights. If you want to animate the object, you can of course just keyframe the transform values. 
but in my opinion, there's a much better approach. By the way, this is also how I created the intro. If you double click the 3D generator, it opens up and reveals the entire node tree inside. From there, you can use my Hopes Motion Pro 3D tools to create smooth and fast animations. If you have them installed, just search for Transform 3D and you will find all of them. For example, let's say we want the Game Boy to pop up into the frame with a rotation. For start animations, ease out curves work best because they start fast and slow down at the end. So we will use a Transform 3D Y ease out and a Transform 3D Rotation Y ease out node. To connect them, just drag them into this empty space right here. You will immediately get an animation, but we want the Game Boy to enter from the bottom of the screen. So go to frame 1 and adjust the start value in the Transform 3D Y ease out node. So the model starts below the frame. From there, you can get as created as you want and even add an outro animation using ease in nodes. Also, another tip, I recommend placing rotation nodes before translation nodes, so the pivot doesn't get messed up. And that's basically it, a super easy way to create clean, good looking 3D objects in DaVinci Resolve. Make sure to check out Escape's USD macro as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe, join my editing discord server and I'll see you in the next one.